Presenting The Whisperer, starring Carlton Young. The Whisperer, a brilliant man who, losing his voice in an accident which crushed his vocal cords, worked his way deep within the crime syndicate to help destroy it from within. To the underworld, his familiar rattling hiss is the voice of authority, to be obeyed without question. Then, a miracle of surgery performed by Dr. Benjamin Lee restored his natural voice, enabling him to resume his real identity. Now, as Philip Gould, aggressive young attorney, he skirts the thin edge of death living his dual role. For as the whisperer, he sets in motion the forces of the syndicate in Central City. Then, as Philip Galt uses his knowledge to fight the organized network of crime which seeks to control the fate of millions in cities and towns across the nation. The only person besides Dr. Lee who knows the whisperer's real identity is the doctor's nurse, Ellen Norris. Now she watches as Philip Galt, using his whisperer's voice, reports to his superiors in the syndicate. Central City reporting. Go ahead, Central City. Instructions given to Saugus. Report back when mission is accomplished. What has Tony Powers done to the syndicate? Tony? I know him very well. He's almost like a father to me. His daughter Margaret and I grew up together. Why are they after him? Well, Ellen, he's a man of great courage and integrity. And as chairman of the Liquor Control Board, he sees to it that no syndicate underling gets a liquor license. And they don't like that. Well, Mr. Power's successor is already in the pay of the syndicate. When the new man in charge, they own most of the licenses. But why the time element? Why must it be done by 6 o'clock? Ellen, in our state, one license is issued for every 2,000 persons. The syndicate is lobbying a bill through the legislature to reduce this number to one license for every 500 people. Well, which, of course, would go to their men. Yes. Anthony Powers is leaving for the Capitol tomorrow night. He has enough influence to defeat the bill. So another honest man is to die so that crooks can reap more dishonest dollars. Unless we can find a way to stop them. Phil, it's horrible the way that octopus of crime is invading every phase of our lives. And we'll continue to until an aroused and enlightened public decides to safeguard their welfare and that of their children. Yes, especially their children. Every paper is filled with the stories of juvenile dope addiction. And that's the most frightening internal menace of our time, Ellen. I'm afraid it'll continue until each parent awakens to the realization that his son and his daughter are actually targets. Well, if I were a parent, I'd make a definite point to educate them to the inevitable wreckage of addiction. And I'd go a step farther. I'd make certain that within the realm of possibility, I'd always know where they were and with whom and what they were doing. Hmm. My mother's 11 o'clock curfew used to irk me, but... Most parental supervision would cut down on several things which corrode and destroy during the recklessness of adolescence. Oh, Phil, I wish you were out of the whole stinking mess. Ellen. I know your association with the syndicate enables you to fight it, but... Now, we'd better do something to safeguard Anthony Powell if we can. Will they try intimidation first? Yes. Even the syndicate tries for murder unless absolutely necessary. If they try intimidation, they'll probably include Margaret in their plans. She's the only family he has, and he adores her. Ellen, you've just made a job for yourself. Phone Margaret, tell her you've missed her, invite her for lunch, anything that will enable you to spend the day with her. Do you have her phone number? I've called it a million times. Well, here, make it a million and one. Since you're sending me out to be a clay pigeon, perhaps we'd better make it a shopping tour. It'll give me a chance to buy Maggie a new horoscope. She dotes on astrology. Hello? Is this a good day or a bad day? A good one, but my horoscope says to beware of old friends. Who is this? Ellen Norris. Ellen, I haven't seen you in years. <laughs> Dad and I were talking about you just last night. What prompted this wonderful surprise? I suddenly had the urge to see you. Are you free for lunch? Yes. In fact, I planned a shopping tour this afternoon. We'll make it a day, huh? And try on absurd hats at outrageous prices which we wouldn't be caught dead. <laughs> Sounds like fun. <laughs> Give me an hour and then meet me at Jason. I'll be there. Bye-bye. Everything set. Good. Now stay with her and wangle an invitation for dinner if possible. Being a woman, you should have no trouble in carrying on a running conversation for seven or eight hours. Now, <laughs> I'll call Powers and warn him to take precautions. Anthony Powers. Mr. Powers, the syndicate has marked you for death. Isn't two calls in an hour rather putting it on thick? If you resign... I don't know you or the other man who called, but I do know whom you represent. And you can tell the scum that hires you that I don't scare and I can't be bought. He hung up. Saugus had already called him, Ellen. Now, while you're getting ready for lunch, I'll invent a mythical client who has a million questions to ask about applying for a liquor license. I'll give Anthony Powers a bodyguard without his knowing it. Mr. 
Powers. Come in, Gold. Come in. Thank you. As I told you when you phoned for an appointment, I'm busy trying to get off to the capital tonight. Well, I'm sorry to intrude, but you'll be gone several days and my client is impatient. We'll go into the library. Oh, Dad. Dad, guess who called for lunch? I have no idea. My dear, this is Mr. Galt. My daughter, Margaret. How do you do? It's my pleasure. Uh, may I presume on a short acquaintance and tell you who your luncheon companion will be? Why, of course. Ellen Norris. How did you know that? Well, it's written in the stars. Are you interested in astrology? I was born under the sign of Capricorn. I was born under Sagittarius. And I was born under the sign of Pika, the boo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dad is not impressed by horoscopes. Do you know Ellen? My dearest friend. She told me she was lunching with you. Oh, Dad, your train doesn't leave until ten. I'd like to have Ellen and Mr. Galt to dinner, if you don't mind. If you'll excuse a hasty departure. Delighted. Talk to you up at seven, is huh? Oh, oh, I must run or I'll be late. Goodbye, Margaret. Bye. Drive carefully. As if she would. <laughs> Have a seat, Gold. Oh, thanks. I've heard you in court several times. Wanted to meet you before now. Wish we had more time to get acquainted. Uh, drink? No, thanks. Uh, before launching into the business of my client, uh, what are the chances of this bill being lobbied through the legislature? Once I reach the capital, I can defeat it. And if something happened to you? I've already had two phone calls today threatening me. Oh? In your place, I take them seriously. They'd never dare make an attempt on my life. The resulting publicity and investigation would endanger the syndicate. Why, they'd never dare harm... Get down! Get down! No need to. He missed. But the second time he... There might... won't be a second time. That was intended to frighten me. Oh. That shot must have come from that wooded section. Undoubtedly. Since it lies between this house and the city, whoever fired the shot is probably on his way into town. Pursuit is useless. However, if we made inquiries... Uh, excuse me. Hello? That was just a sample. If you think your cheap tactics will cause my resignation... Oh, you... tough boy, huh? Okay, Powers, you ask for it and you'll get it. Powers, if that shot was fired from the woods, where could the killer find a phone so quickly? Around the bend of the road, there's a filling station. Well, come on. If the attendant remembers seeing him, we'll at least have some idea of his identity. Welcome. Fill her up? Uh, nothing, thanks. Okay, we... I'll clean your windshield. Hey, how about a complete service today? Lubrication, we... wash job, front wheel repacked, upholstery dusted, battery water checked, new air put in your tires for only seven ninety five. dollars No, no, huh? thank you. We, we oh, only you better wa... have it. You save $4 that way. And how about filling the tank? This is important. Well, you Will think we... selling gas ain't? How far would this baby run if nobody sold Shut it? up. Huh? I said shut up. Oh, hiya, Mr. Powers. Didn't recognize you. You usually come in that old wreck. Never mind. Now, uh, about three minutes before we drove in here, uh, now hour ago, a man stopped, made a phone call, and left. Well, how do you know? You an astrologist? Hey, I was born under the sign of... Taurus uh... the Bull. Yeah. But tell me about this man. Oh, you tell me. He's your guy. What do you look like? Well, he was, uh, uh, kind of, uh, kind of, kind of medium. Medium height, medium weight, medium width, medium what? Oh, just medium. Would you know him if you saw him again? Oh, look, mister, I don't miss much. Then you would know him. No. What model car was he driving? Forty-seven. 47 coupe, 47 sedan, 47 convertible, 47 what? Um, 47 car. Oh, great. What color? Color? Blue, green, red, two-toned. No, none of them. No, I think it was... Was uh, what? Dirty. Yeah, I remember trying to sell him a wash job. Young man, a woman's and... life depends upon your remembering these things. Well, gosh, Mr. Powers, I'm sorry, but... Hey, why don't you ask your daughter? Why? What has Margaret got to do with this? Well, she passed by right after this guy phoned, see? He asked me if that wasn't Margaret Powers, and I said yes, and then he tore out of here right on... Hey! Hey, don't forget me now. You're going to play service. We're having lunch with Jason's. Open it up, Galt. I'll fix any tickets we get. Margaret's my one weakness, and they know it. There's only one thing in the world which could make me resign. Her safety. While Phil and Anthony Powers speed toward the restaurant, Margaret Powers, unaware that she is being followed by Saugus, enters the fashionable cafe. Ellen, Ellen, you look wonderful, just like you stepped out of the pages of Harper's. I bought this suit the year Harper's was founded. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Maggie, it's good to see you. The last time was the night we split a blind date. As I remember it, they deserved an even worse fate. <laughs> Famished? I'm too excited to be hungry. Oh, well, then let's win the shop until we work up an appetite, huh? Okay. There's a certain sales girl I enjoy in Southern. Same old Maggie. Oh, I'm glad we're doing this. So am I. Let's window shop the horns. 
Their $200 wash dresses are on sale for $99.50. Oh, one of my dearest friends has one. It resembles a warmed-over potato sack. It's hoarded, of course. <laughs> Incidentally, I like your Mr. Gold. Phil? Oh, where did you run into him? He's out at the house. Oh, let's go in here. They've got the most wonderful freckle cream. It makes fried freckles look like boiled freckles. Just so they aren't rare. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gold mentioned that you were friends, so I invited him to dinner tonight. Oh, using you as a lure, I said you'd be there. Oh, you like him very much. Hey. Oh, look, a clearance on stoves. Only three ninety eight. That's a steal on stoves. Only I don't need one. <laughs> well, let's go see Miss Mudpack. Miss Mudpack? Yes, she demonstrates facial mud, and I detest her. So every time I come in, I insist that she demonstrate it. When her face is all covered, I decide not to buy. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Ellen, look at this. Oh, <laughs> Uh, pardon me, I was following too closely on your heels. You're the man who followed me into the parking lot. I assure you I've followed much worse, but uh, you're mistaken. Oh, no, I'm not. You almost took my bumper. My dear young lady, you're mistaken. Now, you must excuse me. Oh, not bad. Margaret, do you really think he's following you? Oh, I hope so. Next to buying a new hat, nothing gives the lift. But if he came a... here from the parking lot... Relax, honey, just go in to the... Don't get excited. Excited? Why, I guess it's foolish. Let's forget it. I think I resent your implication. After all, my equipment isn't so bad. Oh, Maggie, you'll never change. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ellie, I've had a wonderful brainstorm. It's such a wonderful day. Let's get my wonderful car and drive out to the wonderful country casino for lunch. Wonderful. I'm parked just around the corner. Oh, oh. Uh, oh I'm sorry. I... You know, you wouldn't bump into people if you stopped looking behind you. I'm expecting my dark past to overtake me. Mm, you're much too young to have accumulated a pair. Oh, I thought I saw someone I recognized. Someone I know? Uh, no, it's, it's someone I don't think you'd care to know. A few minutes later, Anthony Powers and Philip Galt double park in front of Chasen's. Phil runs quickly into the restaurant and almost as quickly returns to the car. She wasn't there. They met in the lobby and then went somewhere else. Trying to find them in this shopping crowd would be almost impossible. Yeah, and that's in our favor. The killer will either lose her in the crowd or be unable to get close enough to harm her and still make his getaway. Gold, shall I call in the police? Whatever you think best. It might force his hand. Is she in real danger? I don't know, Powers. I can't answer that. out my rear-view mirror. Oh, was I doing that? You were, but you didn't think I was watching you. Just a habit. No, I don't think it is. For some reason, you're afraid of that car that's been following us for the last ten minutes. Maggie, I'm not stupid, Ellen. If for any reason I'm in danger, tell me about it. Give me a chance to defend myself. Maggie, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Now, look at it this way. You call after years of silence. A man bumps into me. You become excited and keep looking behind you. If you're not afraid for me, then, then it leaves only one other thought. A very unpleasant one. What? You're spotting me for whoever is or should be following us. Maggie, I give you my word that isn't true. I wouldn't do... Oh, what is it? That car behind us has speeded up. Why, it's the man from the department store. Oh, this is too much coincidence. Turn up the side street, quickly. He's standing, too. I don't like this. Maggie, pull over to the curb. Well, it's too late for that. And throw on the brakes and duck. You are listening to The Whisperer, the story of Philip Galt, who skirts the thin edges of death, living a dual role. Philip Galt, known to the underworld as the Whisperer, has ordered the syndicate's imported killer, Saugus, to force Anthony Powers to resign from the Liquor Control Board. If Powers refuses to resign, then Saugus is to kill Powers. In his campaign of intimidation, Saugus has fired a burst of machine gun bullets into the car driven by Margaret Powers. Maggie, are you all right? I... I'm wiggling my fingers and toes. They say if they work, you're alive. Well, let me know how you come out. My horoscope was right. I should be aware of old friends. 
Helen, how did you know this was going to happen? Oh, Maggie, I didn't. Believe me. When you bumped into that man, I had a hunch. I watched and saw him follow it. I see. The syndicate again. They hate my father. Well, what now? Oh, let's, let's venture out, and if our undercarriage doesn't fold, we'll put in a call to Phil and your dad. Gold, if Margaret isn't here, I'm calling in the police. I think that's very wise. Uh, perhaps that's her. Or news that she's been... Steady. Hello? Dad? Margaret, are you safe? Oh, I'm shaken and bruised. How did you know about the accident? I'll tell you later. Was Ellen injured? Oh, no. No, she wants to talk to Mr. Gold. All right. Ellen wants to talk to you. Right. Hello, Ellen? Yes, Phil. What happened? He followed us and shot at us with a machine gun. The car was wrecked? Yes. Where are you now? At a residence at the corner of Elm and Ackard. Well, don't either of you move until we get there. Dynamite couldn't move me until you get here. We'll go in your car, Gold. Let's take two cars. As soon as I pick up Ellen, I want to get to my office. All right, I'll just... Now, who is that? Probably the syndicate. Shall I answer? I would. Hello? I've been trying to reach you, Powers. The line was busy. If you harm a hair on my daughter's head... Powers. No. All right, then buy your daughter a coffin. Wait. Give me... Give me time to think it over. That's better. I'll call you back in an hour. Galt, I'm a coward. I can't sacrifice my daughter's life. I'll resign. Are you phoning the papers? Yes. Give me an hour, Powers. Just one hour. Maybe I can figure an angle. What can you do? Give me an hour. All right. One hour. No more. But, Galt, I don't think it'll do any good. Phil, I don't care what he says. Tony Powers is not a coward. Why, he holds our nation's second highest award for bravery. Oh, I didn't know that. He served under Ridgeway in World War I. Margaret and I used to play Red Cross nurse, and we'd decorate the boy heroes by reading the citation and pinning the medal on their chest. Ellen, if you don't mind, I'm racking my brain. I can't for help some... it, Phil. Your dirty syndicate has won this fight, and a wonderful man's entire life is crashing around his head. Ellen, who did you say he served under? Ridgeway. 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 Ellen, I've got an idea. Uh, before we go into my office, count under your breath when I say go. When you think 15 seconds have elapsed, say time. What? It's important. All right. Uh, go. One, two, three. Time. Eleven seconds. Come on. What's it all about? You speed it up. I'd say that before everyone speeds up. I got to call the syndicate. What's it all about? They can't kill Margaret. Powers would never stop fighting them. So he is their real target. Uh, operator, New York, circle 1798. Saugus must strike tonight. Tomorrow will be too late. For if Powers reaches the capital, he can table that bill indefinitely. Now I think I know how we can remove Saugus permanently from the scene. Shh. Circle 1798. Central City. Go ahead, Central City. All attempts to intimidate Powers have failed. Go on. Powers and daughter are staying on the second floor of their home. Machine gun be brought to bear on level trajectory? Impossible to use machine gun. Well, what do you suggest? Tonight, Anthony Powers will have two guests for dinner at exactly 8 o'clock. The French doors upstairs will be opened. How does this help Sargus? A hand grenade tossed through the French doors will kill everybody in the room. Congratulations, Central City. Sargus will be so instructed. Phil, you really fixed it. Now, instead of one person getting killed, we all get it. Now, hurry, Alan. We've got exactly 20 minutes to get back to Powers and ask his cooperation. in the library. Has anyone phoned, Margaret? All the newspapers and wire services. Uh, after you, Ellen. Galt, I was afraid you weren't going to make it. The answer is due in five minutes. I have a plan, but first an experiment. 
While I hold my watch, you and Margaret count under your breath. When you think 15 seconds have elapsed, say time. God, you're no fool. There's a reason? Yes. You ready, Margaret? I'm ready. Get set. Go. Time. Nine seconds. Time. Eleven seconds. So? Mr. Powers, you served in World War I. I did. Handle hand grenades? Yes, of course. What is a grenade's greatest danger? Well, that you'll throw it too soon and the enemy will grab it, toss it back, and kill you with your own grenade. Don't they explode on contact? No, Ellen. They're detonated by a time mechanism. A certain number of seconds after the pin is pulled. I know all this, Gore. If a man is tossing a grenade which explodes in eight seconds, he'll have an even greater tendency than you just had to rush his count. Go on. To explode at, say, eight seconds, he must throw it on the count of six. He'll probably toss it on the count of three and a half or four. Now, if the enemy, in this case ourselves, were waiting, caught it, there'd be a possible four seconds in which to toss it back. Oh, but that's fantastic. No. No, it isn't either. As an infantryman, I know. Uh, Go on. Uh, Since intimidation failed, you, Mr. Powers, are the prime target of the syndicate. Now, if you live through the night... If the killer is destroyed, you can be winning the fight at the Capitol before they can get another murderer to take his place. Now, will you gamble your life on your reflexes and mine? Gold, I'd gamble, but if the grenade were dropped... Only you and I take the risk. There's a hole in your theory a mile wide. What is it, Dad? The murderer's known preference for machine guns. He'd never fool with a grenade. Oh, the hour is up. I'll tell the syndicate they've won. I'm resigning. Oh, Dad, you can't do it. I won't let you... I'd rather be dead than live in a country controlled by gangsters. Don't answer it, Powers. But of course. Let it ring. Mr. Powers' lawyers, like doctors and newspaper reporters, have sources of underworld information that are unimpeachable. What do you mean? Since I left here this afternoon, I know that a grenade is to be thrown into your upstairs dining room at 8 o'clock. How do you know? I can't reveal my source, but I'll stand right beside you and bet my life that the information is true. I can't take the chance. Margaret and no Ellen... No harm will come to Ellen or Margaret. Take the chance with me. If we win, the entire state benefits. All right. I'll do it. You took your own sweet time answering. What's it gonna be, Powers? Tell the syndicate. They know where they can go. That's final? Very final. It's your funeral. Well, Galt, we've committed ourselves. Shake? Shake. I've always wondered how a guinea pig feels. We'll know for certain tonight. Phil, Margaret said I'd find you up here in the dining room. I wanted to recheck our plans for any slip-up. I, I wanted to talk to you before before dinner. Sit here, my dear. You know, of course, that an hour from now you... I know. Phil, if anything happened to you, I think I'd die. Ellen, th- there's something I'd like to say to you, you before... Uh, Galt, I'd like to run through it just one more time. I... Well, can't be too careful, you know. Now, let's see... Ellen, what do you do? Margaret and I excuse ourselves after dessert and go into the library. Then we push our chairs back and uh, you offer me a cigar. I accept. We walk to the end of the table and you light my cigar. Then we stroll to the French doors and I open them. Yes. Then I stop in the center of this one and you stop in the other. Hmm. It's getting dark already. Yes. The killer will probably make his way to that oleander bush. You mean with that shadow just moved? Shadow. Look out. Ah! Catch it, grab it. I'll get it. I'll get it. Hurry, hurry. I, uh, this is a rock. I threw it. I wanted to test your reaction. Oh. I wanted to see if either of you could catch it on the strain. But Margaret will be expecting the grenade. But you won't know at what second he'll throw it. Is there a porch light down there? Yes. Well, leave it on, Margaret. I didn't even see that rock until it was already past me. Phil, I hope you don't make the same mistake twice. must make a pretense of eating. I can't. This dessert is choking me. And you too, Margaret. This must appear to be a normal dinner party. <laughs> Two minutes of eight. Phil. Margaret, you rise. No, I... Do as he says. <laughs> Steady, dear. Now you, Ellen. That's it. Smile at us. Good girls. Now chat as you walk into the library. Walter. Uh... Care for a cigar? Uh, thank you. Uh, excellent Havana. Uh, I'll light yours for you. Hmm. 
I'll stall the French doors. Keep your eye on the oleander. I will. Now the doors. Beautiful night. You see him? Indeed it is. Something moved by that bush. Watch it. Watch it. Here it comes. Grab it. I got it. You dropped it. Quick, grab it. Throw it back. Cry if it'll make you feel better. Ellen, it's all over. Everything's all right. Oh, good. Yes. Can I offer you a drink? You certainly may. Good. And while you're getting yours, bring me a double. My legs have just turned to buttermilk. Phil, if you ever take chances like that again, I'll disown you. You won't have to disown me, Ellen. I'll never live through it a second time. Now, I suppose, you've got to call the syndicate. Yes, but Powers and Margaret are safe. The syndicate is lost. Uh, uh, hello, uh, operator, give me New York. Circle 1798. Dinner afterward? No, I must rest up for my shopping tour tomorrow. But you went shopping today. My horoscope says tomorrow is a day of potential explosions. Guard against them. And that's just what I'm going to do. Oh. I'm going to buy a bulletproof vest. Oh, no. <laughs> Circle 1798. Central City reporting. Go ahead, Central City. Sagas held on to grenade too long. State police have taken powers and his daughter into protective custody. I see. For further instructions, call Denver at midnight. The Whisperer is based upon stories and characters created by Stetson Humphrey. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Carlton Young is starred as The Whisperer. Betty Moran is Ellen. Others in the cast were Julius Kraubein, Betty Lou Gerson, Byron Kane, and Jerry Hausner. Original music by Johnny Duffy. The Whisperer was written, produced, and directed by Bill Carn. This is Don Rickles inviting you to listen next week to another exciting adventure with... This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.